We are live. Welcome to SMC Live, Somerville Media Center Live, with uh, our special guest today, uh, the president of the board of directors of Somerville Media Center, as well as uh, a longtime member producer uh, and member rep who is on the board. Uh, I'd like to welcome Joe Lynch. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing terrific, David. Thanks very much. How are you feeling? I'm, I'm doing okay myself. Uh, these are kind of turbulent times that we're in. Uh, we're all kind of thrust into new situations and, uh, and new roles and uh, just kind of adapting with the, uh, the ever-changing environment stuff that, sh that changes on an hourly basis, it seems. Um, and uh, you and I are going to talk uh, in this special edition of SMC Live, which is kind of a, a new platform that we want to present uh, as the way that Somerville Media Center is working to uh, create new pathways, new workflows to be able to uh, present uh, this sort of live presentation going forward. Um, so we want to start off with the, uh, the Somerville Media Center kind of reaction to the COVID-19 emergency. Uh, which prompted the need for ourselves and other businesses and agencies and individuals to respond very quickly. And uh, we were no different. Um, so Joe, when, when was action taken by SMC and uh, what, were, what, what were these actions specifically and, and why were they taken? So Dave, as you know, um, you know, the information that was coming, about, coming out about COVID-19 started to really surface um, in a big way in early February. So the initial cases were being um, reported out of China, then out of Italy, and then before we knew it, um, the alarms were sounding in February that this may turn, which has ultimately turned into a pandemic. So it is a global pandemic. Um, I had been following that, and luckily for me, we have, um, we have a terrific board but outside of the board of directors, I was following that and trying to figure out how much of an impact will this, this have. It was very clear to me by the end of February, um, doing my own research and watching what the CDC was saying. And, you know, I tend to sometimes shut down on Facebook because it's not, for me, it hasn't become a reliable source for information. So I went to the CDC, I went to the NIH, and I was following what was happening. Um, heightened, very heightened awareness in early March. The first week of March, um, I started to get overly concerned because we have a public facility where we have, you know, on average, 100 people coming in and out of the facility on a daily basis. I understood what kind of contagion may be coming. I didn't know when. I didn't have a crystal ball. But it was clear to me that we had to do something to plan for the future. On March 9th, I met with the board of directors. I informed them about my concerns. I said I didn't want to take the risk of planning for something in April because the experts were warning that it was coming in March and it would peak sometime in April. We made the decision at that board meeting to cancel all future public events. Um, by the 10th, uh, we had canceled everything. And then on the 11th, we closed the media center down, the actual facility. Um, I did that out of that catchphrase now that everybody's using, out of an abundance of caution, because we had been notified either through the media, the local Somerville media, that uh, there were at least three confirmed COVID-19 cases in Somerville. The connection to the media center was, was that we, we could not determine which of the kids that were in our facility were direct connected to those. So it was my decision to close it down that early. Um, and, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm glad I did. So we have um, quickly turned on a dime and a lot of that credit has to go 
directly onto the shoulders of the staff of the Somerville Media Center. Um, we didn't have, per se, a disaster recovery plan in place, but we are small enough, we are nimble enough, and we have the technology so that we were able to turn very, very quickly from the time that we closed the physical facility on the 9th, by the, uh, I'm sorry, on the 11th, that by the 13th, we were back up and running. Because as you remember, um, I asked staff to take you personal stuff out of the building um, in anticipation that we may not be back. So what's been publicly announced to date is that we are not gonna reopen the facility um, depending on what happens, but the firm date is we are not going to reopen that facility until April 30th. So that's where we are. That's what we've done. Um, some firm dates in mind. Um, and as you said, Dave, it's changing by the hour. Right, right. And that fast action was, uh, was something that, like I said, a lot of organizations were, were forced to do. And the, the better prepared ones, the larger ones with disaster uh, plans in place, they were able to, to open that binder and, and go through the checklist. But there are a lot of small organizations like ours, small businesses with, without such plans in place. Um, and, and we're seeing uh, that a lot of people um, are, are, are winging it and, uh, and going day by day. Um, and adapting. There's a lot of really great stuff that I'm seeing online. The way that that's, that, that's that right, Dave. Out. I mean, this, this is presenting. It's presenting a challenge to the human race. I think to see how we can react and how we can adapt. You know, I, I, I don't want to go into a lot of the talking heads on TV. I want to be able to give factual information about what SMC is doing in order to give um, as part of our mission. Um, we need to give factual information at warp speed to the Somerville public. And so far, I have to give you credit. Um, the entire staff deserves credit, but I have to give you credit on how fast you've been able to adapt uh, from your regular programming duties, how fast you've been able to push the information out onto Channel 3 and our other social media platforms. So that's all the praise you're going to get for tonight, Dave. <laughs> um, and that's a good lead in to, to uh, be talking about the role of Somerville Media Center and um, at other access centers as the COVID-19 emergency uh, affects more and more communities uh, within the United States. We're seeing access, center, access channels and community media centers prepare and react and step up to, this, to, to the challenges that are out there. And the urgency with which information needs to get out is uh, is... Uh, it's perfect for community access and uh, uh, community media. So how how is uh, Somerville Media Center um, actively meeting these challenges? We can we can discuss among ourselves, but I'm just throwing that question out there as a discussion between us. Sure. So you know the board of directors had an initial play on this. Um, what was relayed to me at that meeting in early April? Uh, I'm sorry, in early March was that coupled with Brian Zip, the executive director and the staff, that it, it was recognized that they're gonna need some more assistance. And, you know, I've been a member for a, over a dozen years down there. I'm fortunate enough to be serving as president. So Brian and I have formed the leadership team um, in trying to get stuff done in a brand new world. You know, normally you guys have it under control when you're in your physical facility, but this is all new to all of us. So how do we, what is our mission during the time of the pandemic? What do we have to serve? We serve our community. Who do we serve? We serve our community. And we're gonna be there for the community of Somerville. So at my direction and Brian's direction and the staff agreement, we are gonna take our information about the pandemic from the reliable sources that we have. Um, Dave is very good, Dave, you yourself are very good about searching the CDC latest updates, National Institute of Health, other sources that you have. You then go to the directives that are being given by the Massachusetts Department of Health, the governor's office, and then you filter that down to 
the Department of Public Health here in the city of Somerville and the mayor's office. So trying to keep up with those daily posts and those daily information. Hopefully what we're doing is we're providing to the city of Somerville, people who can watch us on television, people who watch us downstream on our social media platforms. What we're trying to do is give you one place to go here in the city to see all that information that we're aggregating. And I think it's, it's our responsibility to do that first to the larger community. We can't forget who our members are. And that's something I think you're gonna ask me about a little later is how we're gonna be serving our members. But for right now, the directive from me and from Brian and the staff is in agreement is that we are gonna serve this, the general population of Somerville and give you the most accurate, the most timely information that we can concerning this pandemic that we're all in. Right, that's, uh, that's absolutely uh, what the mission is uh, as far as getting information out there in a timely manner. Uh, some of, the, just to, to uh, expand on some of those sources that you listed, Joe, that we're drawing uh, news information from, besides federal, state, and local entities um, that you mentioned, uh, I know Heather uh, Mack, she uh, was able to uh, get WGBH to uh, allow uh, Boston Free Radio to uh, air an hourly show that they do uh, that updates uh, with updates of information about the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we're also looking uh, to the Centers for Disease Control, um, Free Speech TV. We have uh, Democracy Now!, which is uh, updated daily. And uh, we've actually added two additional um, hourly time slots within the schedule to uh, make sure that people are getting the most up-to-date information. Um, so besides all that, um, we've also expanded our, as we're demonstrating here, our remote meeting capability. So we've integrated the remote meeting platform Zoom into our production workflow. And uh, we will be in the process of coaching members and staff uh, how to conduct these live uh, these live productions using Zoom. Um, I know uh, to mention Heather again, she's been really great at taking this on and applying it to towards her own uh, youth workshops. And she's had a lot of uh, collaborative teaching uh, environments uh, with watching movies and uh, educational opportunities. So there's a lot of applications for this uh, that fit well within our mission. Uh, beyond ju simply this uh, this program ability here. That's um, right, Dave. Can I say one thing about Heather and her youth program? Um, you know, Heather is is tech savvy, and she is one leader that we should have at the forefront on a lot of stuff these days. Because without hesitation, Heather took her, um, for lack of a better term, her business line within the Somerville Media Center. And she was up and running with those kids within a day. So we didn't miss a beat in terms of Heather taking care of her uh, her clientele, so to speak, which are the, the kids of Somerville. And, you know, she was engaging with them the day after we closed down. So I have to give Heather, you know, very little overhead on the system for he Heather is. She can turn on a dime. She can get those kids reengaged and they don't necessarily have to come into the facility. They miss each other because they can't come into the facility, but she's figured out a way to keep those kids engaged and, and kudos to her. Yeah, yeah, and um, keeping keeping youth educated through this is, is gonna be a challenge. You bet. Um, you're, you're seeing it, uh, you know, all, across all sectors and all, all cities and states. And so um, it's important, that's an important uh, facet and that's what we can contribute uh, with our mission and, uh, and kudos to Heather. Um, so I, expanding a little bit about uh, the Zoom capability that we worked out, um, we knew early on we were having conference calls uh, via telephone and you know that that worked out in kind of a limited capacity. But besides the actual calls that we were having, we knew that it was important to get live capability back. Right. Um, right. That's so, exactly right, Dave. 
Yeah, we knew how important it was for this community during the, t- the emergency. We knew it was important for our members. We knew it was important uh, for us as an organization to figure out a way if we cannot broadcast or produce in our physical facility, what is the best application that we can use now? I have very little to say about that because as you know, I have trouble opening up a bottle of wine. So it was you guys who guided me through that, um, how you made that decision. And, you know, quite frankly, um, I'm new at this stuff. You know, I'm in my dining room, you're in your living room. um, And a lot of people I I fear are going to have to get used to um, broadcasting or communicating this way for, for a while. Right. Right. Um, And I don't think you have any problems opening a bottle of wine from what I hear. But thank you, Dave. (laughs) Going back to our members, uh, the members are are the backbone of our particular organization, uh, being being an organization that is centered around community media. Um, That's always been the case since we opened our doors in the early 80s. Uh, member-driven, member-made content is is the key to community media, uh, even even during something like this. So, as we address the very important uh, aspect of getting the latest information out there and and making sure that that is absolutely met uh, to the best of our ability and the best of the information that we're getting, uh, we're also going to be putting the call out to our members to see how they will be able to. Uh, tap into this resource as well. Um, and Joe, why why is that important for us? Uh, uh, why why are these members so so important? I touched on it a little, but may, I want to hear from you. Like why 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 it's important for us to allow our members to have access to this? Well, any association, Dave, is only as good as its members. So we, if we think of ourselves as an association of media producers who have members. Those 200 members that we have, um, we have an obligation to them. They are a paid membership in our organization. They produce content. They have valuable uh, voices that need to be heard throughout the community, whether that's coming from the immigrant community or the business community or the uh, LGBTQ community. All of those communities are welcome at the media center. And it is my intent as long as I'm president of the board, to continue to provide to them that voice that they need. So we may have changed our operating system a little bit, and you're touching on how we're going to roll that out to the membership. Um, But right now, I'm very confident that we have our primary concern, which is getting fast, accurate information out to the public. After tonight's broadcast, I'm very comfortable with the fact that we can now start rolling this out to the membership, uh, maybe on a limited way at first, because we don't wanna open those floodgates and overwhelm our staff, but we may be rolling that out as soon as early next week. So if you are a producer from Somerville Media Center, um, you know the platform or the, the application that we're using now, we're using Zoom, and if the staff of the Media Center can teach me how to install that and how to use it, I am rock solid sure that every one of our producers can use this. If there is a different type of application that you're gonna be using, that's what we need to hear from you a little later. So maybe not this week. Um, I know that Brian and the staff have something that's coming out uh, possibly as early as tomorrow or Thursday. Um, That is just to let you know we are still here. We're here for you. Um, Great new tagline. Thank you to the staff for producing your video to make sure people knew that we hadn't shut the doors. We just temporarily vacated. Um, So we are here for you. The staff is working very, very hard to deliver to you the documents that you're going to need, the instructions. I hear that someone is working on a... um, a video, an instructional video on how to do these things, how to submit your product to us under these new operating guidelines. So the staff is here. The staff is knowledgeable. Um, We're working behind the scenes to, to get you back up and running, either in a live production or in a tape to live 
Um, you know, all that stuff that you ever did in our physical facility is what we're trying to replicate and make as easy as possible to the community. So the community is Somerville Media Center. We're not necessarily the building that we occupy, and that's being demonstrated tonight, that we can still deliver the mission on the mission and still deliver the services. Slightly different, but um, let me make a, a one more statement, Dave. I know you, you've got some other things, but I was asked the question recently on what does this do um, in a, to affect the move of the Somerville Media Center uh, to another facility? My response to the city is that is now postponed indefinitely. That is not something that I'm going to concentrate on in the middle of this pandemic. And hopefully the city will agree with that. So uh, let's kind of put that one off to the side. The immediate need is for uh, our hope that people are taking care of themselves. They're taking care of their loved ones. They're taking care of their community. And a Somerville Media Center is going to be there to deliver for you. That's per perfectly said, Joe. And I'll just uh, I'll just expand a little bit on that. That uh, if uh, you are a member producer, just look out for for a series of emails from us that are going to outline, you know, what what the pro the procedure is going to be. Uh, essentially, if you did have a a live show, you know, you're you're kind of already in the pipeline, you know how making a show goes. So you have a leg up on 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 everybody else. Um, so we are gonna focus uh, primarily on on those live producers, uh, Somerville Overcoming Addiction, Poet to Poet, Writer to Writer, you know, all the, and you know, if you watch SCAD TV, you know these shows, you can rattle them off as easy, as easily as, as, my, as I do. Uh, and I love all of our member producers and we wanna make this uh, available to them. I will say, that if if you are a, a member producer, um, or or even if you're not, and you have an idea that you can approach us with that we may be able to work out at a later point, um, bear in mind some of the needs of your community at this time. So if you have some way to do an exercise show, if you have some way to highlight, you know, your musical talent, you know, to provide entertainment, if you if you can be educational in some ability. You know, keep that in mind. You know, we certainly want people to express themselves as, as they want and to, uh, you know, be able to relay or translate their vision to this. But also bear in mind uh, the kind of needs of the overall community at this moment. Um, and then, you know, uh, just looping back to what I said about uh, the potential to expand this, you know, we are going to be slowly rolling it out to certain groups. At some point, if this goes on long enough, we may look into online orientations and being able to accept submissions from the community, um, which we do anyway at Somerville Media Center. Anybody from Somerville can submit a show. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So just touching on that briefly, look out for all those updates. And um, is there anything else that you wanted to add about that, Joe? No, I think, um, you know, let me just go back to how we opened this up, is that we are an extremely fortunate organization in that we're small enough and we've got the talent um, when it comes to technology. Because, of course, a TV station, a radio station, and a producer of content, we have to know the latest technologies. Um, thankfully, over the years, the Somerville Media Center, under its past guidance and current guidance, um, has been able to keep up with that technology without, for lack of a better term, breaking the bank. So we are uh, very fortunate that we are one of the not-for-profit agencies in the city that um, I'm, I'm saying this because I have confidence in the staff and in the board that we will survive, we will um, last. So uh, there's Dave, yeah, I know. Um, so I just wanna make sure the community knows we are still there. We're going to be there for you in a slightly different location. So coming to you live from Joe Lynch's living room, hopefully this will be the last time because I want to see the members back on air as quickly as we can deliver and as quickly as we can get you back on. Um, that may not be all at once, but keep making the shows and get them in the queue 
because you're looking at the man with the headset and the bigger glasses than mine over there who's going to be controlling the content. But right now, bear with us. It is going to be factual, accurate, and speedy information about this crisis that we're all going through. So if you want a consolidated place to get some information on the latest updates from the CDC, from the state government, and from the city government, we're going to be there and delivering that product. Dave, I want to thank you again. You and Adam and the rest of the staff all arranged this to happen tonight. So hopefully there are no glitches. We are the first live broadcast, remote live broadcast on SCAT TV. And hopefully other people will uh, look to us and say, how did you guys do that so quickly? Awesome, Joe. Um, and I, I just want to uh, end uh, with the last few minutes that we have. Just uh, I'm sure everybody is looking at all the relevant web, web, websites, excuse me, but um, I just want to remind them to go to um, the city website for the most updated information, somervillema.gov slash coronavirus. Um, they've been very excellent about putting up uh, the latest updated city information um, on the, the ongoing pandemic. And uh, ch check out mass.gov for, uh, for the state, um, the state uh, updates. Um, and I also just want to mention um, that there are free grab-and-go meals um, uh, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the East Somerville Community School, at the Arthur D. Healy School, the Winter Hill Community Innovation School, and the West Somerville Neighborhood School. So that's Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you are a family in need of a meal, go pick up a meal at any, at any one of those locations at those times. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Uh, a, a shout out to our uh, municipal employees, our police, our fire, our ambulance drivers, uh, some of our DPW folks, they are still on duty even during this time. So kudos to you men and women of the public health and public safety parts of our lives. Dave, thanks again for making this happen. I see the clock is ticking. What, what do we have about 30 seconds a minute? <laughs> uh, I, I think we have like four minutes, but we could wrap up early. <laughs> ah, well, that's up to you. I mean, we could go on and, and you know, let me, let, I wanna say one thing about how I've kind of guided myself through the last three weeks is that, you know, we're hearing that older people and people with underlying health conditions are more susceptible to the virus than others. Um, I've tried to conduct myself that way because I am over 60. I do have something that I'm concerned about. And I honestly, I kind of wish everyone would think that way, that we're all susceptible to the virus. Um, and you don't want to pass it to anybody else. So I think if we can think that way, we might get through this in a more elegant fashion. Right, I have been hearing uh, from more than one place um, to act like you do have the virus and that you don't want to spread, uh, that you don't want to spread the virus. You and that's, that's a very good kind of uh, way to, to think about um, how things are spread and um, how you need to be careful practice social distancing, which which is kind of a term that I think people have, have finally wrapped their heads around, you know, maintain at least six feet uh, between you and another person um, and stay home, stay home. Don't go, don't, you know, you don't necessarily need to go shopping more than once a week, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so- No, so. I just, you know, my heart does bleed though, Dave, for people who can't stay home. Right. You know, they need employment. They need a way to put food on the table. But hopefully as a society, not just Somerville, Somerville is a, a beautiful community to live in, not just Somerville, but I hope everyone gets the message that you got to take care of each other. Take care of yourself so you can stay healthy, so you can stay take care of other people. Right. And um, the thing is, with something like this, it's it's not anything that any of us could have anticipated. And we like we want to imagine and hope that uh, an end to this is is right around the corner. Uh, but we do need to anticipate that it may not be around the corner, um, that we might be in it for a little longer. Um, and so just getting into these these um, really good 
habits and practices of, of just keeping yourself safe and keeping others safe, I think it's really, really important uh, to, to, to maintain that. Dave, I'm looking forward to another broadcast. Maybe you'll have me on your show at some point. All right. Well, I want to thank you again, Joe Lynch. Uh, it's always a pleasure. And uh, we'll do this again soon. Um, and everybody stay safe out there. Thanks, Dave. I'm going to log off. I'll see you.